stuff. Uh, so my name is Lasse Mäkelä, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Investor. Um, have you guys woken up? <laughs> it's a bit uh, quiet here. Uh, one question actually I, I want to ask you all is that um, how many of you have invested into an equity uh, through an equity crowdfunding platform by so far? Quite many, great. What about the debt-based crowdfunding platform? Great, good. About the same same number there, good. Um, what I'm I'm going to be speaking to you a little bit about the legal framework of uh, Europe, my favorite subject, not. But anyway, <laughs> I've been asked to do that, so I'm happy to uh, contribute uh, on this subject. Um, um, but I, I thought that maybe it's good to so a little bit to open up uh, my background, uh, what inverse investor is all about, and then go into the subject. I started my career in 97 uh, in uh, investment banking, at Merrill Lynch in London. So I did IPOs, equity offerings, a lot of financing uh, restructurings. Um, after four years in London, I went back to Helsinki, uh, became a partner in a local investment bank there, continued with the same, same work uh, there as well. So, and after that, still, I was about eight years in the industry, uh, different uh, sort of finance-related uh, uh, areas. And what I learned during that time is that raising funding is complex, uh, difficult, expensive, and very manual. And really what Investor is all about is that we try to automatize this. Digitalize it, automatize it. Uh, that's pretty much what we, uh, we have been uh, after. So take all those extra bankers, extra lawyers away, and just focus on the fundraising process. And that's what we have been doing. Good. So what is Investor? Uh, we are a Helsinki-based um, equity and debt-based crowdfunding platform. We do transferable uh, debt um, uh, bonds, basically. Uh, we were founded in 2012. Uh, we have raised so far about close to 17 million euros now to 63 successful um, uh, uh, rounds. And we are the largest player in the Nordic region in the equity crowdfunding uh, based on the volume raised and the turnover. What makes us unique is that we were the first player in Europe who uh, got this uh, MIFID investment firm license. And I'm talking about that a little bit later here as well. Here are some of the statistics uh, uh, what, uh, what, what we've been doing so far otherwise. Just a little bit about the manifesto, the, a little bit coming back to the idea of what I said earlier, we want to make this standardized, uh, this uh, uh, fun, fundraising. And although regulation gives us the uh, framework where we have to work, but we still want to make it fun, safe, uh, and simple. So really, finance is, uh, is an industry that really needs disruption. They are old, rigid structures, uh, and which are expensive uh, and non-transparent. And that's, that's what we want to change. And really, uh, we, we need to grease up the old structures of finance. So basically what we are doing, we are challenging the old structure here uh, and trying to, to sort of uh, put the investors back uh, with the entrepreneurs so that they can together create something more. This is a subject what has been discussed here uh, often, but as I come from the financial uh, world, these are these are quite radical ideas in uh, in, in many of the cabinets uh, where where uh, the, these have been discussed before. So so really, uh, the idea is here is that basically uh, finance needs a, a new new tune, and uh, we are here to to help finance to to dance. So that's why we call Finance Let's Dance, is our slogan. Our team, we have about, uh, we have 17 people currently uh, from five, five different nations. Uh, we have people from Finland, Sweden, UK, um, Italy, and uh, Ukraine as well. So we consider ourselves a very international team uh, uh, working uh, on, this, uh, on this area. So now going back to the, the, uh, the subject. So big picture, uh, 
about equity crowdfunding, investment-based crowdfunding. It started really to emerge 2011, 2012. Of course, there have been something beforehand, and finally, you can always argue, so what is finally crowdfunding? Was crowdfunding already what happened in the, the, the base of the Statue of Liberty, which was uh, uh, crowdfunded, basically, and the means of crowdfunding was just the, uh, the, the newspaper used at that time. We are now just doing that with an, with an internet. But anyway, 2011, 2012 started this crowdfunding word come up more and more. Regulators started to act, uh, sometimes with a little bit of delay. Um, in our case, how it happened is that once we started, we contacted our financial authority uh, in Finland. We asked whether we need to have a license to operate. And the answer was that no, you don't. Just keep on doing what you're doing and uh, we'll see what happens. After two and a half years, uh, they came back and said that, well, we have been a little bit thinking that nowadays you need to have a MIFID license. So then we applied for that and uh, that's how, how uh, we went uh, forward. But that's a good example of the regulators coming later. There has been a lot of talk about crowdfunding in Europe um, and EU levels. But then finally, uh, what, what I think is, uh, is an interesting uh, area is that actually finally the, the member states, the, the EU countries, have started to put their own crowdfunding laws into the force. And unfortunately, they all have been a little bit different kind of laws. And then finally, you have to sort of, this becomes even more difficult for somebody who wants to do cross-border crowdfunding. Uh, these laws, uh, I'm sure they're very good uh, locally, for the local, uh, uh, in, in those countries where, where, where you're operating. But if you look at the cross-border angle, those are difficult ones. Uh, but then finally, uh, what, what our finding here is that if you want to do cross-border crowdfunding in Europe, MIFID is still the best, best solution. That's, that's pretty much meant for that, and that's the, the best you can have for uh, this industry. Although it's a heavy process, but still uh, it's, it's better than uh, going through all the 28 member states and trying to figure out what the law is in, in those different states. And the problem also with these local laws is that you can often not uh, uh, sort of offer those shares outside that country. Um, so they are very local solutions. Cool. Well, then, so how are we set up? What is, what is, what is our setup now? So we have this passportable MIFID investment firm license uh, from Finland. We have notified 28 countries in the European economic area. We can currently accept uh, target companies from four Nordic countries, so Finland, Sweden, uh, Norway, and Denmark, and also UK. And the investors can come from anywhere around the world. We can serve listed, but also unlisted companies, uh, including IPOs. We've been now in two IPOs so far. Uh, one was the main listing to the main market in the Helsinki Stock Exchange. NASDAQ. We are headquartered in Helsinki, and we have a branch, and we have an office in London currently, uh, and we are also opening a branch in Copenhagen uh, soon. So we are now focusing on the northern, northern Europe. Well, and this all was possible with the MIFID license, uh, what we have. But then Okay, you have the MIFID license, but then there are still more complexities continuing after that. Uh, then after the MIFID, you sort of, you have the license to play, but then you still have to comply with the local laws. Uh, and, and then when you start to go through these laws, you start to realize that how different the laws are in Europe. Um, for example, uh, one, uh, one just an example is the private public companies like you can be, well, let's say, let's take Sweden. Uh, in Sweden, um, if you're an unlisted company, you can be incorporated as a private AB or public AB. And if you are a private AB, you cannot do public equity offerings. You cannot offer shares to the general public. If you are a public AB, you can. And 
to become a public AB, your uh, own capital has to be more than, I think it was around 50,000 euros is the, the, the area where, where you're talking about. The same kind of law uh, uh, is uh, in force in Denmark and a few, few other, other areas. So although you have a license to operate, although you have the MIFID license, you still have to check every single country what are the laws in those different countries. Then a good example is this prospectus limit. Like at some point, if you raise uh, in Finland more than 2.5 million euros, there has been a change in the law now, but uh, we're still this breakfast we were even debating, is it the 2.5 or is it the 5? Uh, so we don't know yet exactly, but 2.5 as at least uh, was the uh, before 1st of uh, September, the limit. Uh, so if you raise more than 2.5, you need to have a, a um, uh, company, so mini prospectus. If it's more than five, then you have to have a full prospectus. But the, li the, law, the, the level is important. We had a fintech company, uh, Cloud Insurance from Norway, as an example. They raised funding through our platform, which is based in Helsinki and which has notified operations to, to, to uh, Norway. So what happened? They raised funding. Uh, whose prospectus limit are you going to be using? Is it the Finnish prospectus limit, which is 2.5? Or is it the 1 million, which is the limit in Norway? And what if you offer those shares to Estonians? The prospectus limit in Estonia is 100,000 euros. So then we come to the question of, well, what is, what is offering? What is the offering in the digital world? And that's also a good question. And uh, I, I think there are some... Uh, guidelines and we, we know sort of where, where the, those go, but let's say if somebody posts on a, in a Facebook says that we have an offer open, then your friend, Estonian friend, translates it in Estonian and puts it on your, his friends as a Facebook. So is that, are you offering? That's a good question as well. So it very sort of, uh, uh, sort of this, you start to open up these issues, although you have the MIFID license. And then in some countries, uh, which was interesting to find out, is that you actually even need a physical notary to stamp the shares when you, <laughs> when you do an equity offering. And if you have to stamp the shares, and you have to pay somebody to do that, and if you have 300 shareholders, so it's like, <laughs> it's uh, interesting findings uh, in Europe still in year 2016. So really, uh, final words. Um, so the European legal framework for cross-border investing is it's unnecessarily complex. Um, and it uses too much resources for, for the players. We ourselves, we have 17 people, two and a half of those are lawyers. So we have quite a heavy lawyer uh, team in our, our uh, team there. Uh, the, the, the tricky part here is also that it punishes the, the smaller uh, nations. If you Let's say if you do, uh, you have the local law in UK, that's fine because you have a big market, you have a big home market there, and we, we've seen how, how successful UK has been. But if you come from a small country like Finland, your market is not big enough. You have to go right away across borders, and then comes the problems of this uh, sort of uh, the, the bureaucracy which hits in. But anyway, uh, with all these, uh, uh, these words, uh, uh, still MIFID, uh, currently, we believe it's the, it's the best solution for cross-border investing, but, but it is too heavy. So I think at the end, I mean, we really need, um, or let's say, let's do, say so, that if we want uh, cross-border uh, capital to flow, then, I mean, this legal framework could be easier. Uh, I mean. It's, it's, a, it's a simple thing. You can't have both. So whether you want to have uh, capital, then I think this is an area where we have to focus on. And I know there are a lot of people thinking about this, but still, it is a, it is a big issue. So with these cheery words, um, I, I want to conclude uh, here and uh, want to uh, sort of invite everybody to, um, in case, you want to be part of the crowd and you're interested about the Nordic companies, so this is the place to be. Thank you very much.